Hi everyone, I'm Ben Will. Uh, I'm from Massachusetts and I'm a sophomore at UVM. I'm studying biochemistry and have a minor in pharmacology. Um, and fun fact about me, I have recently joined a research lab uh, working with Marcus Tully on um, virus spread throughout tissues. Uh, as for what uh, made me join, uh, choose UVM, the community is extremely supportive and collaborative, and it's abs an absolutely amazing um, learning environment to be in. Uh, so the people in the community really made the choice easy for me. Uh Hi everyone, um, my name is Bridget Duryu. I go by she, her pronouns. I am from Williston, Vermont, and I'm a senior studying biochemistry with a minor in French. Um, for a couple years now, I've been part of a lab group studying um, biology and uh, neurodevelopment. Uh, and I decided to come here both for the location and um, for the fact that I, I really liked UVM's biology department. Um, I'm Jess. I'm also a senior and I've been studying biology and English, I'm majoring in both. Um, I'm doing research in a marine biology lab looking at really tiny crustaceans in the ocean, how they're adapting to climate change. Um, and I chose UVM, like a lot of it was the people and also the place. It's a really great location and everyone's really supportive and friendly and you can tell the second you meet them. And that leaves me. Um, so my name is Courtney. Hi, y'all. Uh, I kind of forgot the questions, but I'm gonna roll with it. I use she, her pronouns. I'm from Northeast Pennsylvania. Uh, and I study economics and French. I have a minor in business administration. And I guess like a fun fact is I don't really have a fun fact, but my research right now is on growing obesity trends and income growth in developing countries. And what does that mean for welfare among people? So that's what I've been looking at. And it's nice to virtually meet everyone. So if anyone has any questions, you can uh, type hand into the chat or type your question into the chat and I will uh, read it out. Or it's just gonna be us staring awkwardly at like screens that say y'all's names because no one has the camera up, sadly. Uh, yeah, Harry. Uh, what's your what's your question, Harry? Do you think that there's a divide between age call students and the rest of the college? That is from Harry. Um, I could I could take this question. Um, hi, Harry. That's a good question. Um, I would say that we we. There's, there's a building where the age call students live, which is UHN, but not exclusively. There are some students who are in the Honors College who live in other places, but um, primarily the community is based there. But I would say it's more a place where there's kind of a, an uplifting spirit and a, a, like an academic spirit to that building in place. Um, I wouldn't say that necessarily that means that um, it, it's wholly separate. Every, every other part of campus uh, is not age call specific. So um, in your classes and other parts of life, you'll interact with mostly non age call students. Um, so, so while there's a kind of divide sometimes in terms of the academic rigor of um, your surroundings, uh, I, I would not say that it's in a bad way that there's a sort of social divide or anything like that. 
Yeah, I mean, I'd second that. I've noticed the same thing. It's nice to have the age call support because a lot of times you'll get to know them through the honors college specific classes and maybe you live with them and you see them a lot. But at the same time, you're seeing like in the bio department, for example, I can recognize almost every bio major because I've been going through classes with them from the get go. So you're getting to know people outside of age call just as easily and clubs and stuff too are great to join for that. Ryan asks, how much time would you say is spent each week on honors college classes and work? Um, Tim's got it. Oh, you want, you can answer. No, okay. Uh, outside of class, uh, isn't, I think the general rules that you spend about two or three hours on class uh, on a particular class for every credit that that class is worth. Um, so for honors college courses, uh, in my experience, it's generally a lot of writing and uh, reading. Um, there isn't quite as much of a, it's not quite as much of a test-based um, coursework. Uh, it's definitely a fun time though. So I mean, everything's pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, to piggyback off of that, I'd say that honors college classes tend to be more essay and like Socratic discussion based. Um, while of course there's exceptions because there's a whole bunch of options that you can choose from for at least your, your sophomore year honors college courses. Um, I, I wouldn't say that it's, it's more than any other class would be. It also definitely depends on the classes. So I've had a few, like the very first semester, first class, the pursuit of knowledge, to my knowledge, I think it's staying the same for y'all as well. Um, that class was a lot of work for me simply because it was just like the first time I've been writing papers and having Socratic discussions um, in my entire like kind of academic career. So I had to work a lot harder on that one to change my writing style and to really understand what the professor was kind of talking about in class. So that one, I would say I spent a good two to three, even four hours per credit hour um, in class. So it was three credits that would amount to like a, up to 12 hours of work every week just for one class. Um, but then going on to my second semester, I had a class that focused on race in movies and advertising. So it was a lot of just quick discussions about like modern topics and stuff I was really, really interested in and watching a lot of movies and kind of discussing what this means um, in our kind of modernized, racialized world. So it really depends on the professor and kind of the expectations that they set. But as everyone was really saying, um, not really anything different than your typical UVM class effort. It's always, or not effort, but um, I guess requirement, I don't know what the right word is, normally two hours per the credit hour, as Ben originally said. Um, Emma asks, how close are students within the Honors College? Um, my personal answer, most of my, my closest friends are actually part of the Honors College. I think the Honors College is um, a really, really collaborative environment. Um, I know in my first year, I could walk down the hall and ask pretty much anyone a question and they would be super excited to share their knowledge. So people are generally pretty, pretty friendly in the Honors College. To kind of piggyback off that, I'm in my apartment where I live with two others on our honors college students, one of whom has been my roommate for like four years. So it's definitely an environment where you can get to know people really well. Um, but they're definitely not also not my only friends, as we kind of talked about before. But it definitely is nice to be like in such a supportive environment and to make friends that kind of stick with you like that. Yeah, I think there's there's really a sense of community. So because you live in the same place for the most part, there is, um, I, f I feel like students in the Honors College are very close, just given, like, if you if you pick out any two students at UVM, if they're both in H call, they probably know each other. Um, it's just a nice, smaller setting to meet people in. And so I think that that can really help people to, to 
feel a sense of community um, and getting to know people and faces so that campus starts to seem less than 10,000 people. <laughs> Yeah, I pretty much agree with everyone. My best friend was my roommate in the Honors College, and I miss her because I'm not in Vermont right now. But yeah, like I hang out with pretty much all my friends, including Jess on this call right now, um, are in H call. And I mean, everyone else is my friend too, Bridget, sorry, and Ben. But yeah, um, so yeah, a lot of my, my closer friends are definitely in H call, but that does not mean that you will not find people in your majors, in your clubs, and everything else. They tend to be, I'm not going to lie, like honors college students tend to be your first friends on campus just because you live with them and you have a class with them. So you're spending a lot of time with them. But um, it doesn't really stop there because you'll definitely keep making connections throughout your career. All right, switching gears here. Uh, Annabelle asks um, if the average class size of the overall undergrad program which is 32, I didn't know that, it's 32, uh, if it applies to the Honors College. Um, so our, uh, the Honors College courses you'll take um, are discussion-based. So um, they generally have around 18 students in them uh, to easier facilitate discussion. Um, you're all, you'll also find other classes that are considerably larger or considerably smaller, depending on what your major is. Does anyone want to add anything? Yeah, I think, I think uh, in, in most universities that one would find themselves in, uh, everyone will likely experience one class that has over 100 people in it. But um, regarding the Honors College specific courses, they're, they're pretty comfortably small. So I think you get to feel um, more a sense of, um, I don't know, feeling, feeling like you can step up and, and speak in a, in a room full of people that will generally, you'll get to know over the course of that class. So it, it's nice to have that small scale classroom for H call classes. And even the big class that you'll probably be in at some point, especially like my English classes have all been really small, but like a lot of the core classes for getting into the biology major have been, you know, the bigger classes. And I found I actually like big lectures way more than I thought I would. Um, but it's still nice to have that variety if you're in those big lectures to then go to the small age called class where it's much more discussion based and less low lecture style. So it's a different kind of setup of classroom. Um, Sam asks, uh, what are your relationships with professors and whether or not you're able to get to know them well? Can I like skip ahead of people? I'm sorry, I'm so excited to answer this question. Yes. Um, so like I, I would love to say I'm best friends with my professor, but it's not appropriate yet because I haven't graduated. But as soon as I graduate, I got, we're going to be at like FaceTiming and all that fun stuff. So you get really, really close with your professors, not just in your age call, just in your major and everything else. Like if you're really interested in what the professor is studying, if you're really interested in the professor's personality, teaching style, whatever, like they're adults, like, and you're an adult at that point. So you can build a, a, a bond or a friendship with a professor and it's not weird. Um, I have a professor who in the age call, I took his age call class and he was actually a French professor. So then I took all of his French classes as well. And he still remembered me from like the H call class. And we talked about stuff that we talked about in English in that class now in French. So it's really cool to see these professors work in H call classes and then go take classes with them in their actual department. Cause you kind of see like a whole different side of them. Um, he was way more chill with our like small discussion class than he was with our 200 level French class, but that's beside the point. So you get really close, I guess, to summarize. Yeah, and, and it's it's the kind of thing where you it, it comes from you kind of, but but professors are eager if not like they're they're willing, but but they can easily be be eager if you are interested and excited to hear more about their research and um, share yourself with them. Um, a lot of professors are really open to that and excited by that, so it's um, it's easy to find support from professors and build relationships with them.
especially if you introduce yourself after like your first couple of classes or something like that. It's a great way to like feel like you're meeting them person to person. Just to add on, um, for some of honors college students, not everyone, but for some people, um, the connections you make with your honors college professors are really valuable. I, uh, the professor whose lab I work in now was actually my honors college professor um, this past semester. And that was a really amazing class. We got to uh, delve super far into how viruses work and the benefits of viruses, which sounds a little odd right, with what's going on right now, but it's definitely very interesting. Um, so you'll find someone who has that same sort of interest with you uh, eventually. Um, moving on. Uh, Raven asks if you found your roommate before freshman year or if you went random. I'll answer this. Um, so I went random with my roommate and it worked out really well. Um, we've been roommates for four years. We went abroad together, not on purpose, but it worked out really nicely. Um, so for me, that worked really well. I think however you do it, either meeting them at like orientation, which isn't really going to work now, um, like finding them on Facebook or something like that or going random definitely going with someone you don't know ahead of time, like someone you don't know from high school is a good way to go because it's someone new to meet and someone to go to the dining hall with. And all of that is like very helpful. And if it really doesn't work out, there's ways to get that changed. Um, and also sometimes transitioning from being friends to roommates can be difficult and more difficult than going with someone you don't already know and you're setting the boundaries as roommates from the get-go. Yeah, I also went random, but the moment I, I like kind of talked to her a little bit once we found out we were roommates, um, the moment I entered the room, she watched me make a list and then made me take the Myers-Briggs personality test, wherein we found that we were very similar, um, and we're still rooming right now as well. <laughs> um, so yeah, it can, um, it can, it can, it's possible if, if the rooming situation, however it begins, doesn't work out for you to get a new roommate, but, um, generally, however you do it, uh, random isn't a thing to be afraid of. Yeah. I also went random. Uh, did not turn out as well as everyone else's lovely stories, unfortunately. But that's okay, because we, you know, I just, we survived together in, in the room, and we just respected that that half was hers, this half was mine, and at the end of the year, we moved on. So it's not dramatic if you live with someone that you don't really like, because at the end of the day, you're not, at least I wasn't, and I'm sure a lot of y'all won't be. I did not spend a lot of time in my room. I was on campus, in libraries, at events, just constantly out doing stuff so that I didn't have to sit in this area that I didn't feel comfortable with. So, and I was actually spending a lot of time right next door in my current roommate's room because her roommate didn't show up to college. So the world gives you interesting things. Yeah, I, I have a similar story. My uh, freshman roommate, we didn't get along super well. I mean, we lived together, we coexisted, but we weren't the best of friends. Um, we were roommates. And uh, I went random again sophomore year. And my roommate this year was actually uh, really awesome. And so I, we're getting an apartment together in this, this summer, assuming we can move in. Um, Ryan asks what the kitchen in uh, the Honors College dorm is like and if there are pots and pans available. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it's an awesome place. That'll turn into a very social place, I think. Um, I've watched people make granola there, baked squashes there. I've seen many a dance party occur while making pancakes in that room. Um, and yeah, there's often stuff you can use in, in the cupboards. If you have like a favorite pan and you're worried they won't have the same kind of nonstick pan that you are most comfortable using, feel free to bring stuff um, from home and just like bring it up and down from your room if you like. But there's definitely stuff there that you can use. 
baking cookies in that kitchen is also a great way to make friends. <laughs> that could be why we're so close. <laughs> and us, we as peer mentors host events in that kitchen all the time. So there's almost always some sort of free food available during the week in that kitchen. Um, our next question is, uh, about bathrooms. Um, since they're all private, do we have to clean them ourselves, provide our own toilet paper, soap, and toilet brush? So yes, wait, hold on, let me, let me do it again. So clean, yes, toilet paper, no, that's downstairs, but if it's like trash, so if you want some nice two-ply, then you have to provide your own. Uh, three, I'm sorry, I'm like cutting everyone off. I'm just really, just really excited. Um, soap you have to provide your own and then the toilet bowl brush i i think there was one in there i don't really remember wait ben you live in the you lived in the dorm you should probably i this. i don't remember there being a toilet bowl brush in my room i i know there's a vacuum at the front desk i don't think they have a toilet bowl brush though um yeah. so that's a good question for some I, uh, good question. I'll look into that. Who, um, you should email me and I'll figure, I'll get you an answer. Um, and then just one other thing, they, while you are expected to, to clean your own bathroom, um, if you need product, like if you don't have any product and you need some, there's some available at the desk downstairs. And it's earth friendly. So it's great. All right. Our next question. Uh, what is one item you wish you brought to campus your first year? And one thing you wish you knew your first year? One item. Uh, I guess I wish I brought a weighted blanket. I only found out what those were this year and they seem amazing. Just, it gets cold and apparently it's a very comforting feeling to be like covered in a heavy blanket. So I, um, just in like the college experience for some people, it, it, everyone will feel anxious at one point or another um, in life. So weighted blanket, wish I brought it. Um, one thing I wish I knew my first year, does someone else want to take that half? Um, I can jump on it. I mean, I've also got a thing I wish I brought, which is I didn't bring a bike my first semester, which was a big mistake because biking is awesome around campus um, and also downtown you've got the bike path that goes all the way along Lake Champlain and you can go out onto a causeway um, and then something I wish I knew I think we kind of already touched on this but I was really intimidated to talk to professors at first and they just really want people to talk to and I wish I'd realized that sooner <laughs> yeah they're sad lonely people go talk to them like they just sit in their office on Facebook all day if you do not go talk to them so that's like a great you're that's a good one Jess go bother your professors They'll be really excited. And one thing I wish, oh, Bridget, weighted blankets are A1. I got one for Christmas like two years ago and that's the only thing I stick with now, like it's wonderful. Um, I wish I didn't bring st something to campus. Like I had so much stuff, like I had two truckloads of stuff and that dorm is, is spacious, don't get me wrong, but it's not that big. So I had way too much clothes, way, way too many things, so just, be mindful of what you're bringing and make sure you're actually going to use it. Cause half the outfits after week two, I was just wearing sweatshirts and, and the same pair of jeans. So. Um, Emma asks, uh, how easy is it to get into uh, or get a research opportunity and can you start as early as freshman year? I'll jump in on this one. You don't need to start as early as freshman year. A lot of people stress about research and you definitely don't need to stress about research. Um, it's definitely something that I would say kind of happens differently for everyone. For me, it was just a professor I had who I just went and had a conversation and I was able to start in the lab doing something really basic, just like taking care of animals um, and then moving on towards developing that into a research project. Um, but it's definitely through conversations and talking to professors about their research that you kind of start to see those opportunities, um, especially professors you've had. So it definitely is easier going forward after freshman year, but I'll, like it's 
probably possible as a freshman, but it's not something to worry about because a lot of people worry about it and like force themselves to take too many commitments when you're just figuring out how college works. Yeah, um, along with that, I think, well, again, it, it's totally possible. I, I knew plenty of freshmen that were involved in research their freshman year, but I think the trouble with that is that Sometimes joining a research lab can be a long-term looking opportunity. And if you're not sure what you really want to do yet, getting involved in a commitment like that um, can be difficult because then it's, while you totally can back out of it, it's sort of an awkward thing to say like, oh, I thought I liked this, but turns out I don't. Um, and while that's totally fine, it can happen. I think it's, it's a lot easier to wait, figure yourself out in terms of your interests and then join when you feel, when you feel confident. Yeah, I'd like to pretty much reiterate all that. Um, I have friends who have joined labs freshman year, but um, a lot of them ended up spending more time than they wanted to uh, learning some of the introductory courses that they hadn't had a chance to take yet that were very uh, important for understanding what was happening in that lab. Um, granted, the professors who run the labs are more than happy to sit down with you and work on that and teach you the things you need to know to be successful in the lab. Um, but it's definitely easier to start uh, after your freshman year, I would say. Moving on, where's the best food on campus? Jess, you have to take this. You have a whole list. You got a problem. I have, a, I have really strong opinions about this. Okay, for breakfast, Harris Mellis, which is right across from UHN, is the best. They have an amazing bar of fruit and also really good just breakfast food in general. For pretty much every other meal, it's Redstone Dining, which is over on what's called Redstone Campus, but it's still pretty close to everywhere um there's also buses you can take if it's a cold day um and then central's probably the most convenient because it's right where classes are located for lunch but it does get busy and they don't have ice cream so i i place ice cream as a high priority i'd also like to add that at the davis center if you have unlimited swipes you can now get lunch at a select few locations um, for those of you who are, i'm assuming you all know this but for those of you who don't know the davis center is the student union and has a lot of awesome places to get food so that's my lunch destination every day when i'm on campus there's a really good burrito place it's very good <laughs> Are any of you playing sports or in clubs? And do you have enough time to be involved on campus while in the Honors College? I'm hyper involved. That's so, I don't, I don't want to toot my own horn, but I am very involved on campus. I have, I think four jobs. Yeah, I have four jobs on campus. So I'm a TA, a tutor, peer mentor, and I also work for the Career Center. Um, I am the vice president of a club. And I'm also a part of three other clubs while on top of being a double major and a minor. So you can be involved. It just sounds like I do a bunch of stuff, but it's like really kind of minor involvements everywhere. I split up my time a lot. I have like massive schedules and just constantly enjoy doing stuff. So you can be really, really involved and um, still really do well and not fall behind on your honors college um, like requirements. I also know a lot of students who are actually in like varsity teams and just club sports. It's, I know like Jess, you, you probably have like a little bit more information about that, but a lot of honors college students are heavily involved with, they are always doing something or starting their own clubs. So it's definitely a possibility and highly recommended to do. Um, yeah, like Courtney, I do a lot on campus in terms of both work and clubs and stuff. And my roommate is actually captain of the club softball team. So she's really, really involved in that. Um, and that's a big, like, it's a big time commitment, but it hasn't at all been a problem with age call. And it's something she loves to being able to do. And similarly, I know a lot of RSD athletes that are also in the Honors College. Um, so you can definitely be involved in multiple things and age call. It doesn't really take time away from all of that. 
Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not as involved on campus with, with everything, but, um, but I am involved in acapella on campus, which um, is only one thing, but uh, certain commitments like, um, like certain varsity sports and clubs can demand a lot of your time. But despite that, they generally tell you up front when you're in the middle of joining, like this requires this many hours a week of your time. Um, just be aware of that. Think critically as to whether or not you can take on certain things into your schedule. And if you have the room there and if you are good at time management, um, it should be no problem. Um. How easy is balancing major requirements with honors college requirements? Um, the awesome thing about the honors college curriculum is that most of the classes overlap with some form of general education requirement. Um, so you can kill two, burn, two birds with one stone uh, pretty easily. Um, so. That's also something that I would suggest doing, um, given that in my personal experience, um, I don't think I ever killed two birds with one stone. I think I would get so distracted by one of the age call course offerings that I'd go like, ooh, I want to take that, without understanding that that was in a totally different sphere of education that did not apply to anything that I was studying. Um, but it, it, it's, it still worked out. Um, and it's, it's generally, um, they generally try to make honors college course offerings um, cover a lot of bases in terms of what topics um, they connect to so that most majors will be able to um, have something, um, have some requirement uh, met by them as well as it being an HCAR requirement. Yeah, so I actually, I finished up all of my university ride requirements my second semester sophomore year um, while still in age call because a lot of my age call classes actually uh, covered those as Ben was saying. Um, and then I also finished up my first major. So I finished my econ major last year and then I just added this French major this year. So it seems like a lot of requirements, but really as you get more on and you get towards the end, you realize, oh, it's not that actually that much. Um, and I had a normal, like a normal course load. Some of you, some of y'all might have very structured majors where you have to take 18 credits. Um, luckily I didn't have to do that. So I normally was, yeah, yeah, all you science people. Um, I didn't have to do that. So I had normally between 16 and 17 credits. Um, every single semester and that was totally fine and that equates to I think four four classes oh, yeah. uh, just to build off that I have had um, about 17 or 18 credits every semester so far at school I want to make it known it's very doable if you put in the time and effort to do well in your classes um, that being said I found out about a month ago when we started doing registration and I looked at my four-year plan that I probably won't be taking more than 15 credits a semester for the rest of my college career. So you can spread it out. It's not actually that bad. I freaked out my freshman year and I took 18 credits. It, it was fine, but you might want to use yourself into it. Um, Moving off of that, uh, what is your favorite honors college class so far? Oh, I can answer this. Um, personally, I took a, um, uh, it, it was it was a class, um, I forget that what the exact title was, but it was rooted in democratic institutions and it was like uh, constitution building, uh, where you learned about what goes into drafting a constitution and then kind of um, as a class, you try and make a committee that has multiple different factions that fight for different things, and you try and build a constitution with all of that in mind in a, in a certain context. And it was with um, a professor who had worked in the Carter Foundation who had been involved in um, South Africa's constitution drafting, and he looked like an aviator beyond that. It was a wonderful cartoon. Um, my favorite class 
by far. Uh, my favorite HCL class was my race and literature class. Um, it was just really cool um, and a really cool class to be in, like with all the people who are in it. Um, also, I'd say it really depends on your professor for the honors college classes, like because it's so it's really it's kind of cool because the professors are really tailoring these classes towards what they're interested in. So like every professor you have is probably really passionate about the subject they're talking about, which like brings a really great energy to it. That class. I took, we took that class. Yeah, I took that class with you, right, Jess? Yeah, cool. You liked it because I was in it, I know. Um, no, but my favorite H call class um, was actually called War is Hell, and it had, which was like super scary, and I'm like, why am I taking this? But um, it was with my favorite professor. I was talking about him earlier, the French professor. And we basically studied emotional responses to war and how the narrative of war has changed over time. Um, basically from the Renaissance all the way up to, you know, the Vietnam War. So it was very cool. We watched a lot of movies and we did a lot of discussions about just how we as a society have changed our narrative about how we think about war. Uh, personally, my favorite class was the one I took from my current PI, which like I said, was about viruses and the benefits that they uh, have because most times when you think about a virus, it's a negative connotation and they actually do some pretty amazing things. Um, are any of you guys in the pep? No. I tried to be in the pep band. Um, I was in marching band in high school, but um, it didn't really fit into my schedule, so I couldn't do it. Um, Sorry about that. Two of my really good friends are in it and they absolutely love it. And it's been like a highlight of their college career. So it's definitely a great thing to be involved in. And it works. It's been the highlight of my every, every basketball game that I've ever gone to. The pet band has been an extremely important part of my experience. They look like they're having so much fun. I suppose that's the point. They're the best. Uh, can you guys describe the influence of Greek life on campus? So can I lay this down? Okay. I don't think any of us are in Greek life, right? Let's just clear that up. No, none of us. Cool. Um, so it, <laughs> I don't think it has a really big influence on campus, in my personal opinion. I've never, okay, so I've never been to a frat party. Um, they aren't really that cool. I know there's one that we call Pizza Hut frat. No. Um, they really don't have a lot on campus. There is definitely a presence. They have their own kind of space on campus, but they don't like have clicks. So if you really want to be a part of Greek life, that's great. No one is going to judge you for it. There's a community for you and you'll definitely have friends and you can be friends with people who are in Greek life and who aren't. Like there's really this great blending at UVM's campus. Everyone is accepted. So if you want to join Greek life and make it a big part of your college career, you totally can. And if you don't want to ever see a frat or a sorority, you also totally can. Um, I have a great friend who is the president of Tridel, and I didn't even know she was in it until like probably a year after we met. So it's really something that you can pick to be a part of, or you just totally don't have to be. And every aspect of it too. So I've been to a lot of fun events, like they, like Tridel does pancakes and free desserts, or not free desserts, but like this day where you pay like a dollar and you can eat all the dessert you want. So you go to those events or you can go to other events held by friends. I don't know if I was supposed to say any of that. Sorry, Britt. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not, I, I would say it's not like a community where there's any, it, I don't know, it, it doesn't hold any more weight than any group of people on campus. I second all that, I don't really have anything else to add. Um, but how does the Honors College dorm compare to the Honors College floor in the wellness environment? You wait smart is the best, that's all I'm gonna say. Not biased at all. <laughs> uh, well, this is a, a very nice program if that's what, you, um, what your main focus is. I'm glad that there is, uh, there, there's space and there's probably community just as well. I personally haven't experienced the wellness environment floor, so I'm not speaking from experience, but I know that um, the different floors of the wellness 
building for first years. Um, there's not really movement between floors. Each floor is locked to the other floors. So you only know the people on that one floor, which is still a lot of people, which is awesome. Um, and, but UHN living there, it might be easier if you're looking for a bigger community um, that is a bit more general. Uh, University of North dorms also have private bathrooms, which is probably the best thing about the dorm after air conditioning. No, actually before air conditioning. Air conditioning comes second, but private bathrooms are really awesome. So highly suggest you Heights North. You're also near Martha and Scott, which you y'all will meet Martha and Scott. Oh, and Britt, of course, as well. But you'll you'll probably get a better relationship with Martha and Scott just because they'll be your your advisors. But Britt's awesome too. Uh, you came in right at the wrong time. Um, <laughs> but you'll you'll really be in a building with your advisors, with your academic team, and it's just some people find it weird to not have that separation. But I always thought it was so great. Like I had this meeting with Martha at eight a.m. and I just rolled out of bed and walked right back downstairs. Like, it's just really great to be able to have this environment of education downstairs and kind of your, your life upstairs. To add on, your classes are in New Heights North for the Honors College. That is important to know. Thanks, Ben. Sorry. Yeah. All the classrooms are in New Heights North for your H call classes. Um, Y'all, I'm going to jump in there because we are short on time. I was wondering if we could just wrap things up. Um, ben, Bridget, Jess, Courtney, if you wouldn't mind going around, if you've got um, one more thing that you may want uh, these folks to know about UVM that you haven't had a chance to talk about yet, if you go ahead and talk about it now. Um, while we're doing that, if you don't mind one more time typing your email address into the chat function. A lot of great questions tonight. Thanks, y'all. I just want to make sure that if you do have follow-up questions for uh, these folks, you can go ahead and drop them an email. So, uh, Ben, Jess, Bridget, Courtney, any final thoughts? Um, I was just talking to one of the, the first friend I made at UVM today. Um, we were just talking about our first year experience and he was saying that what made him choose UVM over the other colleges he was looking at is how it seemed like you could find anything you were looking for, um, pertaining mostly to the idea that you can change your mind, um, that there's a lot of really great programs and really great people to support you through um, life. And, and if you completely decide to change gears, you'll likely find what you're looking for here as well. So it's, it's been a place that's been very kind to me personally. Yeah, I mean, similarly, I, I love that I've been able to do, like, I'm doing biology and English. It's super weird. doesn't sound like it should fit together really well, but it's made that variety in my studies really nice. And also just, like, everyone on campus, it's the kind of place where people hold open doors for you, and people smile at you when you walk by them, even if you don't know them. And that's just something that's so nice to have around, and I miss seeing people around now. I'll let you know, Jess, people that are not on campus definitely miss campus right now, and we, we definitely miss y'all. Um, it's just UVM is so, so wonderful for choice, just really choosing as we really got into that, like everyone can find a place on campus. You can be a part of Greek life. You can be a part of the pep band. You can be a part of anything and you'll find people here that are there that really enjoy it. Um, to kind of go off what Bridget, Bridget was talking about, um, I changed my major my first week at UVM. So I guess that's my, my piece of advice, my piece of wisdom. Don't be afraid to change your major and don't be afraid to question, explore, add a minor, take a class because you want to. It's really, college is, is to find yourself and to explore what you want to do. So definitely do that while you're at UVM. Uh, just have to second everything that's been said so far. The community is amazing. Um, your ability to explore who you are and what you're interested in and find that niche is, uh, so plentiful you can do it however you want it you be um and as courtney said switching things up super easy i changed my major before i got to campus um and since then i've added two minors and i'm thinking about dropping one of them and i'm looking at a 
accelerated master's program. There's a lot of opportunities. So you can do whatever you want. Great. Well, thank you for, for your time and your thoughts and all your wisdom. And thanks to all of you for your great questions. I was wondering if we could do one last thing before we sign off for tonight. Um, I do want to respect everyone's bandwidth, your data, however you're joining us for this uh, chat tonight. But if you feel you can do it and you're not going to kick your family off of Netflix or what have you, um, when I count to, to three, if you'll go ahead and just turn your video on real quick so we can just all wave to each other and wish each other a pleasant evening. How does that sound? Yes. All right. We're for it. Okay. All right. On three, everybody. Ready? One, two, three. Yes! That was so awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. You all have a safe and very pleasant evening. Thank you. It was a privilege to have you all here tonight. Um, have a good evening, a good weekend. Do be in touch with these folks with us in the Honors College if you do have more questions, if you want to continue the conversation. Thanks again. <laughs>